So the banner to run to through for these two. Kenny and Nass. They'll be getting the ball first. The home team. We talk about all the, all the points that they've scored, the Melbourne Storm, over the last couple of weeks. But don't be fooled. They are a tough, competitive, defensive side, and they love the confrontation. Saints have got to bring that here this afternoon, especially in the first 20. The Storm's quiet achiever. Kenny Bromwich on that left edge. He'll be a Dolphin next year. And how good's this guy going? Speaking of left edges, you love this guy. I do. Eight try assists already this season. Uh, he's been outstanding. Only the three tries, but what a tackle buster. You've got to be on defensively with this guy. When he decides to run, you give him an opportunity, away you'll go. So wins over Newcastle, the Roosters and the West Tigers in the last three weeks for the Dragons and now looking to conquer the curse in Melbourne. Referee Peter Goff just waiting for the all clear. And that jersey to be hung up. Game number 200 just waiting for the parents to get to safety. And we're ready to go as uh, Brandon Smith with his new hairdo. Just with a chuckle as he said farewell to them. And they shifted immediately the storm to their left-hand edge to get the milestone man involved. Kenny Bromwich gets the first hit up. Unlikely when the kickoff went to the other side. Yeah, something a little bit different there. We've seen that done in State of Origin a number of times too, just to loosen the, the offensive side to try and charge you. It's a good ploy from the storm. Dragons defense nailed Olam on play too, but now Jesse Bromwich is rolling. Good meters after contact there for the veteran. Harry Grant out of dummy half. And Josh King will prompt the penalty. They're all inside the 10, according to the ref. And Frankie Molo wanted to debate that one. Well, did you notice that straight away? One of the St. George Illawarra players laying in and around the play the ball, Harry Grant, straight out of dummy half. First run from him. And they get the first penalty, the Melbourne team. Got to be so disciplined when you play against them. And that's not a great start for the Saints, giving away that penalty. Should we hold? Wait there, Tarek. Hold. Okay. And they get it centre field immediately. The man playing game number 150. Big Nelson. You see Bromwich, who set up that penalty with the 15 metre game. Munster on to Kenny Bromwich and Talatau Amon. Got early contact on him. Grant scheming. Hughes, they've created the potential overlap as Remus Smith has come back inside. The Dragons scrambled nicely enough. Hunt stayed out of it. Little no look at for Asifa Solomona. No way through. And now they get to the final. Oh, on the final play, they get the set restart. Dragons discipline letting them down early. Grant from dummy half. Moses M by organising that defence had to get involved four there to stop the number nine. Pappenhausen deputises. Lovely pass to Hughes. A slip in the defensive line. The one-on-one -on -one tackle had to be made and was by Molo. Set restart once more. Cast your mind back to last week against Newcastle who weren't tackled until 12 minutes in in that game. And the storm all over the Dragons early here. Jesse Bromwich in his little brother's milestone game scores the first four-pointer as the weight of possession, three minutes of it, pays off. Yeah, on the back of a, a penalty early in that set there, straight away, and then a couple of restarts. They're just relentless, just straight through the middle. Now, if you have a look at their stats for this storm side, they're first on the left-hand side in scoring points and tries. First on the right-hand side, and first down the hay diddle diddle. Second man play. Got caught flat-footed bird. Too strong Bromwich. Too much ball for the storm, and they open the scoring. That contact was interesting, wasn't it? King just uh, 
thrusting Tarek Sims back, who's shifted to a middle roll with Bird going to an edge. And the try has been confirmed, though. Some Dragons fans would have been thinking maybe an obstruction might bail them out, but the try stands. Well, they had a couple of players to come off that line and make the tackle there on Jesse Bromwich. The captain of the Storm goes straight over the top. Oh, you can't pull it up. There's no way that he was going to get there to help and make that tackle. But to the letter of the law, they'll probably pull it up. Common sense. You've got to have a look at it. Like, there's two blokes, three blokes coming into the tackle. But he does take a little while Josh to get it a down. Runner. He runs directly into Tarek Sims. Tarek Sims is looking to come across and defend it. This affects the defensive line, his ability to defend. We have a decision. Well, I don't reckon he would have got anywhere near because I'll tell you what. Jack DeBellin was on the outside of him and didn't even join in the tackle. So how was Tarek Sims going to get there? Anyway, no try. So Matt Noyan in the bunker does weigh in and the Dragons will get their hands on the ball first. No, no, they're you here with the obstruction when he makes contact with Tarek. Just wait for me. Jesse now understands. Stay outside. Might be the last chance they get the score, I'd say. As we check in with our man on the sideline, Jake Duke, good afternoon. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Typical Melbourne conditions down here on the sideline. Cool and sunny at the moment, but we have had some droplets of rain floating around this afternoon, so hopefully that holds off. The Dragons, as you mentioned, Speedy, trying to end a 23-year losing streak here in Melbourne. Their winning percentage against the Storm, just 28%. Their worst against any team in the competition. They are trying to define that today. There's DeBellin taking them up towards halfway. They did beat them twice at Olympic Park in 1999 before losing the grand final against the same opponents. Embi did so well to hold on. Got lost behind his back for a brief moment there. And Coates couldn't jolt it free. Gets involved down low. Xavier Coates off the wing. Back-to-back -back tackles. And they'll head his way again for Embi to go high. Who wants it? No one wants it. Bouncing ball goes straight to the X-Men. Yeah, that's surprising too. The ball so far away from the catches there for the Melbourne Storm. And Saints even with a good chase there allowed the ball to bounce. And Melbourne Storm come away with the ball. McMeany. And rolling with just one marker. Harry Grant sensing opportunities. Fans thought that tackle was a little high. All above board from Molo. Into Dragons territory again. Grant off the outside of the boot looking to find touch and he'll achieve that inside the 10. Yeah, it's always a big advantage to have a hooker than kick out of dummy half like that. Off the side of the boot, deliberately done. Just want everyone to watch at home the amount of times that the Melbourne Storm put the Dragons on their back when they've got the ball. They're so clinical. They turn you on your back. They win the tackles. We talk about that a lot. And they're the best in the league at it. Stay square, Marker. Craig Bellamy's also got a great record against his opposing coach today. 11 and 0, beaten Griffin eight times when he was in charge of the Broncos. A couple of times as the Panthers boss. And then once so far when he's been in charge of the Dragons. But he can end that streak today, potentially. And here's a help. Holding DeBellin down far too long. Hunt doesn't waste any time. Just hanging on a little bit too long. For mine, that's a dominant tackle. DeBellin on his back, hand on the ball. That was what the penalty was for. And this man needs to have a big game. Surely, we know how destructive runner he is, but needs to get himself involved. No good sitting out there on that left-hand side. Not doing anything. Strong work over the top to slow down Molo. Now Hunt. Short ball for Sims was flat. McCulloch to Amon. Nice service for Lomax against Olam. Trying to drag him towards that touchline. How clever was Jack Bird? Saved his teammate, just stripped his teammate. And kept it well and truly away from that touchline. Oh, 
Hunts links up with Embai. And Hughes stops him, denying any offload potential. Hunt again on the final play. Dumped after getting the kick away. Up goes Meany. That's some take in traffic and tackled in mid-air to boot to earn the penalty. There would have been a lot of reasons why they signed Meany, the Melbourne Storm. This would have been one of it. Look at that for a courageous take there above the pack. Gets tackled mid-air and they win the penalty. Six wins already for him this year. It's after five in the previous two years as a Bulldog. I think he's enjoying life south of the border. Touch finder was well caught, prompting that ripple of applause. Munster waits. Nice for Solomona. Dragons getting right up and around the ball. Melbourne Storm averaged the most offloads. The Dragons have conceded the most. So watch out on that front in this contest. She's been good at Monsa early in this game defensively. He got up and shut down Munster. How clever is Grant? Since the markers weren't square, took them on. And now the offload has led to this opportunity down the right-hand side. Smith couldn't hold on, though. Suli forced the mistake and celebrates that little victory. Yeah, great tackle there from Suli. Now Revan up there. Tried to get on the outside of him that time. He's cut back in field a couple of times when he's had the ball, Rima Smith. This time tried to get on the outside of Suli. And that is a good one-on-one -on -one tackle. Just cleans him up, loses the ball on the way down. 12 seconds, let's get set. Form up. Just get your arm around here. Let's go, guys, heads in. Dragons preparing for just their third set. Melbourne's completion rate has been up over 80% four times already this season. Bellamy won't be pleased with the two early errors here. Bird, a strong player. Big raps for him in the pregame from Mick Ennis. Former teammate. Nice looking shift for Suli. And Smith tries for some revenge. Josh Maguire, that's a strong run. Shifted out to an edge in recent weeks. A long time. Lock. Now to Bellin. And the set restart inside the 10, the storm. And to Bellin rolling off the back of it. Big opportunity to hit the scoreboard first here as Hunt upended by Kafusi. Now Embai. Was he expecting that? No, he was not. And Melbourne looked to counter attack immediately. And they did well to get in the face of Jerome Hughes, who Kafusi was looking to use. Now Munster gets away from Bird, but Lomax was there as backup and needed to be. He had to come again that time. Lomax to make the tackle. Munster's got a great awareness of when to run. The Saints just, as we said before the game, they won't get that many opportunities. They're right on the goal line there of the Melbourne Storm. Yeah, and lose the footy, then get the penalty. Let's go, Jerome. Then they pounce on those errors and look to capitalise immediately. Once Maguire lost that ball off the pass from Embi, they look to launch quickly. Yeah, they don't they don't settle the play or anything. Oh, here's some bad news. Remus Smith, it's like he's done a shoulder there, the way that he's carrying it, or a peck by the look of it. We'll get Jake Duke onto that one. Reshuffle required. As Craig Bellamy goes to his bench, Rima Smith not in a good way. And you can see that Wishard has slotted straight into that role, like for like, at right centre.
Happenhausen for Kenny Bromwich. Looked like some obstruction there potentially, so Meany will do well to accept the tackle, but the penalty still comes. It's going against the Dragons, in fact. Just want to clear it, Matty, if there's anything more than the penalty. I just wonder what their mindset will be here when they take the two points. It's in kicking range, but they like to play that up-tempo type of game. And a little bit of ball in the back of a penalty down the field there. So let's see what sort of respect they're going to play pay to the St. George Illawarra side now early in the game. They took two late last week to go from 48 to 50 against Newcastle. <laughs> 120 points scored in the last two weeks. On Anzac Day, they scored 50-plus in the second half, and they will take the two here. Yeah, it looks like they think they're going to be set for a, a little bit of a... or more of a grind. And that was the halfback taken out there. Molo just knocked him over. The news... I thought they looked a little bit rattled. I'm surprised they're taking the shot at goal. But the Saints' defence, especially after Munster up the other end of the field, had made like a half break. They've looked dangerous. But they're going to they're going to go for goal here. Harry Grant had a dummy half already. Wow, how good has he been? Just one little opportunity away he goes. That's where it all starts for the Storm. One more look at uh, Molo on Hughes here. A little shove from behind and the potential of the whiplash. But, uh, not a whole lot in it. No, not really, but you know, didn't have to go on with it. Obviously, the coaches tell you that when you close off those halves, every opportunity you get, try and put them on the ground. This is round nine, to put that into perspective. And he's missed, has he, from right in front. But he is the... Record point scorer through nine rounds, and he's achieved those 115 points through the opening eight rounds, of course. But uh, a poor miss after deciding to go for two, but they'll get the ball back after the rarely seen 20 metre dropout. And Hunt got a good piece of that. Some sort of kick, isn't it? Bromish doesn't have to worry about passing off, away he goes. Had to brace for contact, though. That was good stuff from the Dragons, and he was holding down Molo. There's plenty going on in the ruck. Well, they've got to be aggressive. There's a swinging arm over the top. I reckon they'll pull this one up. Molo trying to serve his authority here against the Melbourne Storm. Good on him. Having a dig. He might have went over the top there a bit, but you need to do that when you're playing against Melbourne. He gets anything with the arm coming back around. Need to be aggressive. And there's the swinging arm there on the way down the second yep. the second go at it. Yep, there it is. We'll be on report. Yeah, I've, I've got to come back. Who's this one? Ushka. Francis, just give us some space, mate. Jack, need some space, mate. Yes, sir. Do you want to hope you don't go to the bin for that? Go again, Matty. Yep. Try shot on report. Look at him, yeah. Francis. Yeah, it's a crusher. So he gets him. Crusher? Yeah, crusher. So it's on report. I'll yeah. just wait for a sec there. So we've got a number of penalties now. A couple of foul play, 10 metres and a lot in the right. We just need to clean it up. We're not going to keep doing that for the half, right? Tackled the uh, Bromwich brothers back to back and he was a little too fired up there, Frankie Molo. Not the conventional kind of crusher that we see. Almost the twisting motion. Yeah, there was a high over the second, the second grab or the second time he just with the swing and arm the first one was there and then aggressive over the top you can't afford to keep giving him the ball but oh Hughes pirouetting his way through nearly just got a little claustrophobic out there for Jerome Hughes who held on and there's Molo again and Big Nelson filthy with that effort from Big Frankie Grant with a little nod. And the mistake. It doesn't look like they're going to challenge it neither. I think Kafusi lost the ball on the way up, did he? Play it. Incorrect play the ball. Dragons were all over it. 
They were advising the referee and Peter Goff chimed in. Kafusi on Hunt a lot of times too in this game. And there's the drop ball. Was there a hand from Maguire? But anyway, they didn't challenge it. And the Saints hang on. That's it. Stay in tight there, Max. Okay, ball in. Stay in. Pappenhausen locking the scrum. Ravalawa. And the Storm had jumped the gun. Now again, the piggyback is on offer. Yeah, they've made it pretty easy for the Saints to get out of their own half, haven't they? Given away a few penalties already. The Melbourne Storm. And they'll be fired up in this set defensively. And the importance of the first try in Dragons games. When they score the first try, they win. When they concede the first try, they lose. Simple as that this season. As Sully got that high fend off going on Coates, left him on his back. Wishart's got his hands full now, trying to contain Sully. After replacing Remus Smith, we'll get an update on that in a moment. But the Dragons are on the front foot here. Tarek Sims, who's been signed by Melbourne for next season. Always a strange occurrence when they come up against their future employers. Amone out the back for Burr, drops it on the boot. Hunting is rather lower, but the line has cost him, and he knows it. I think he tried to slam the ball down with his right hand rather than trying to knock it back in field. Bird, a clever no play, two in and behind. Just confirming that the ball is uh, touching goal. A little grubber kick there from Bird. Just mixing up his game a little bit. The Dragons kick chases on size. Meany was hoping. No touch from him, and he played it coolly the enough. Ball is because... then grounded in the touching goal line. We have a decision. Yep, they'll get a seven tackle set as we check in with Jake Duke. Yeah, really bad news for the Melbourne Storm boys. Raymond Smith, we saw him come off with that injury a little bit ago. It is a suspected torn pec, the Melbourne Storm tell me, which obviously has ramifications with this game with young Tyron Wishart, who's a hooker turned half, playing out there in the centres, defending against Moses Suley. But that could have long-term effects here for the Melbourne Storm if that is confirmed, because that is a long-term injury. You got any experience with that one block, the torn no, pec? torn pec. That's probably one of the things I didn't have. <laughs> Thank God. Wishart might be a chance here as Hughes stepped through one tackle. They're so professional, the Melbourne Storm, that Wishart would have uh, maybe even trained in that position I'll just be, in case. I'll be sending the message out to Suley. Every time you get the chance to run the ball up against Wishart, not used to playing in that position, run. Oh, a little slip from Embai, who got down low to stay out of his own end goal. Now they have to bring it off their own try line, and Ravalawa being bent backwards so awkwardly. And granted him a favour there by leveraging his body off Ravalawa before it got really awkward, or has it done some damage to the Fijian winger? Back here, Kenny. Justin. Onside here. Tackle two. He's okay, hobbling back into his position on the wing, but that's three tackles now. Five metres out from their own line. Suli does get to wish up. Good contacts. And the little man, comparatively. Just can't afford to give away a penalty, the Melbourne Storm here. They've done a few early in this game. There's Hunt with a kick downfield. From inside his own 20, you don't see that too often. So Meany can bring it back to halfway. Storm with the field position as we so often see. And that's a win for the defence too. They were able to nullify the Dragons with yardage there. And they're on the attack again. And the Munster kick set it all up to the perfection to the try line. Now they've got a chance to set it up for an attacking kick potentially as McCulloch just turns to the ref and says, how about that elbow right in my ear hole? Oh, well set up for Pappenhausen. And he's opposing fullback Moses Embi with the try saver. Grant was careful. 
Hughes drops one in behind. How's the bounce? Lomax with one hand left it behind. And this try will count. In game number 150, Nelson, Asifa, Solomona can celebrate big time. Yeah, it's a good chase through. Asifa, Solomona scores the try there for the Melbourne Storm in his 150th. I don't know what he was really doing, trying to do there, Lomax. It's two hands for learners. It was a great tackle by him by on Pappenhausen. And here's the grubber kick. Lomax tries to clean it up one-handed. What's he doing? The Storm right on the spot to score. Try number 24 for Big Nelson. And the first of his career tries came against the same opposition in Napier in 2015. There were some storm hands on it there. And maybe the bunker and Matty Noyan might weigh in again because it could constitute a knock on before it got to Lomax. Bunker check, looking at possible knock on by Melbourne. We've been over the stripe a couple of times, haven't been able to get the tries. Let's have a look if it's a knock on by Melbourne. Does Melbourne he try chase the right side. So Munster wraps his hands around it. Zach Lomax makes contact with the ball first and knocks it forward into Cameron Munster, who then knocks the ball forward. We have a decision. Does Munster knock the ball forward or back? I think forward. Do you? Yeah. So I think uh, they'll get the ball back, but still no points on the board here midway through the first half. So we've got a double knock on. The first one, yeah, the Dragons. Yeah, second one, Melbourne's going to be goal on dropout. <laughs> Pappenhausen, the calming uh, influence. It's OK. Zach, it's our ball. First, we'll get there eventually. He's oh, keeps it pretty down. calm, doesn't he? Line dropout. Well, one thing about the Melbourne Storm is they'll keep coming. <laughs> Been disallowed a couple of tries early in this game. Hunt again goes long. And again, the storm let it bounce. Set up kindly for Munster. Popped out the back, and Grant had to scurry. Tarek Sims looking to latch onto the loose ball. Now, so for Solomona, takes four to stop him here. <laughs> De Bellin says, let me go, mate. Got to get back in that defensive line. Hughes for Pappenhausen. He's so good, isn't he? Pappenhausen oh. gets there. He told his teammates it was cool. We'll get the ball back and I'll do the damage this time. Ryan Pappenhausen at this venue. Amy Park, he's done it again. Scores for the 10th game in a row at this venue. Not many can boast that kind of stuff. He's got unbelievable speed, hasn't he? The way he just cuts back on the inside here. Second man play. Doesn't worry about the overlap that they've got. Some beautiful footwork. Hunt misses the tackle. And that's strength to get the ball over the line. And as you said, a little backing off there. The Saints show and go. Just backs himself. They can't make the tackle. Some big men trying to make the tackle there too. And Josh Maguire... And Suley, they tried to make the tackle. The hand, the finger comes up. And that's the first try for the Melbourne team. Geez, they're quick, aren't they? They do everything at 100 miles an hour. And there's the first try to the Storm. Just the fourth man to achieve that stat. You see there, 10 straight games, scoring a try at the same venue. And it's 18 tries in those 10 games. It's not just one try per game. Amos Roberts did it at the SFS about 15 or 16 years ago now. Phil Blake did it at Brookie. And Darren Albert, of course, Darren Albert did it in Newcastle. Yeah, they're great to watch. They, they bring people through the gates, those sort of players, don't they? And this bloke especially. Post-contact metres at the moment. The Melbourne Storm, 132. The Saints only 61. That's a better strike. Missed one from in front, but now converts his own try. And the Storm lead it, 6-0. 
Yeah, Ryan Pappenhausen with his 11th try of the season. He is the outright Dalliam leader heading into this round. He's got 121 points for the season so far. A crazy statistic that he actually has more points so far this season heading into this round than the bottom four teams. The Knights, the Bulldogs, the Raiders and the Tigers all on his own. He is a superstar of this game and he continues his red hot form here to start this one. What number will he have on his back for New South Wales block? 14. I don't think it'll be number one. <laughs> Wouldn't be out of place, but would he? They'll get him in there somewhere in the 17. So after some frustration, a couple of tries chalked off. The Storm first on the scoreboard. And Blake Laurie out there to lend a hand defensively. 61% of possession so far for the Storm. Laurie replacing Molo, who gave away his fair share of penalties. Fusi finds his front. Grant. And the Storm over halfway through King. Munster again looking to drop it down into that corner. And by. Played it coolly and got the bounce he was after. Footwork's been a bit of an issue in that corner for him, though. Just dabbed the ball over there that time. Munster, the ball goes dead in goal. Lomax to restart on the 20. You know what? Amazing thing so far. The Melbourne Storm haven't missed one tackle yet. Saints have missed 10. And the Dragons have missed the most tackles this season, as well as conceding the most offloads. And the run meters, better than two to one for the Storm. But here comes the George Illawarra through Talatawa Moan. Seven tackles set here after Munster kicked that one dead in goal. McGuire just turns towards Kafusi, says, I'll have you. McCulloch throwing dummies. Closing in on 300 games in the NRL. Mbai just drops it on the boot. A late decision and followed up the kick to get to Pappenhausen. It was an awkward bounce there too for Pappenhausen. Up the short side, the Saints grab a kick in and behind. They'll try and bridge up here. Try and force the error. Putting his hand up for the hit up and the fans appreciate that from Wishart. Munster takes the line on as well. Aaron Woods just on over the top lane. Holland. Not the fend and Ravalawa just lined up Meany from a long way back. He's out there with a new look. Brandon Smith. What kind of cheese is that on top block? Swiss. <laughs> I don't think it'll matter what colour hair that bloke's got. He's a weapon. Gets involved immediately. On Fine. And involved back to back. Grant and Brandon Smith. Surely felt that one. That legs tackle by Big Nelson. Strong finish of that tackle. Woods didn't appreciate it. Hooked King. And we got back into that marker position to ensure there were not too many metres on offer for McCulloch. Kick to come from Hunt. Hughes called into it by his teammates and he stood under it bravely with Laurie hunting him down. There's been some indecision under those high balls for the Storm then. Yeah, they haven't attacked the ball like we normally see. There's a, another penalty. Wishard with another good run. Just winding up, getting deep. Wins the penalty there. Plenty of work for him to do at the back end of the field. Go, playing in the centres. Don't forget the Sharks against the Warriors coming up next. It's the late game on your Sunday ticket. Nine penalties already in this game. Storm leading that count. Oh, 
Tarek Sims gets a well-earned rest. Brandon Smith took an eternity to play that one. Big Nelson straining for every metre on offer and holding that ball down just long enough. I'm sure there was no mistake in the play of the ball. Pappenhausen for Wisher. And Sully went high, slapped him to ground. Ball hits the deck. Who wants this? Hughes accepts the tackle after Bird got rid of Grant. Only knows one way. Josh King straight up the guts, 197 metres last week against his old club. Nelson takes them on on the final play. He'll be forced to hand it over, but he's hunting that meat pie. He's loving getting involved, hasn't he? He's been outstanding. The metres after contact, Big Nelson just charging. As you said, King, a, a good run in that set too, but tough afternoon coming off the own line like that against Melbourne. Again, the Saints are doing it. On the ball in the last, something a little bit different here from Melbourne. With McCulloch in his wake, couldn't get rid of Woods. Now Laurie for Hunt, and here's Sully against Wishart, who holds onto that left tree trunk. And they are rolling, keeping it on that side to test. The replacement player in the unfamiliar role. Hunt under pressure from Smith. Pappenhausen, up he goes. Touchline is looming here, and the Dragons played that perfectly. Well-positioned kick, and they'll get the ball back. And Pappenhausen's in a bit of bother here. Already the injury to Remus Smith, and now their superstar number one He's really struggling. Oh, gee, that was aggressive defence there from the Saints. The they oh, held him up. Yeah. It's going to be a play the ball. Just kept him rolling towards that sideline. Oh, looks like he's in all sorts, doesn't he? Pappenhausen. Yeah. All right. Desperately trying to stay in the field of play. Ties back on, we're gonna play the ball. And it came late, didn't he, when he was dumped the across the sideline. Yep. Oof. The he might have got his knee twisted as he tried to keep himself in the field of play. The studs might have got He's stuck the in the field. ground there. Onside. Onside. Please, please. That's the opportunity they need too, the Saints. On the attack now, they're gonna throw something here at the storm. So without Pappenhausen to organize this defense, big opportunity for the Dragons. Passing it back to Hunt, little runaround play from Mamone. Sully back to his feet. Pappenhausen's back out there for now, but he's hobbling around behind the defensive line. There's Fumayono just on. Midway through the count for Mamone. Oh, what a tackle! Justin Ollen. With a team lifter on Jack Bird, not many upend him like that. And Jack Bird goes to the PNG International, says, I'll take that. Well played. Love the sportsmanship on display mid game between those two. Gee, could have got the ball away there, Maguire. Looked like it was a two man or three man overlap. They go that way now, and Xavier Coates jamming in off the wing, got to Sully to help out Wishart. And the Dragons cough it up. Gee, I wonder whether he was onside there. Made the decision to come in and make the tackle, Xavier Coates. But Maguire, had he been able to get the ball away, here's that tackle up and under the ball there. Olam on Bird. And they hang on the storm. Desperate in defence, aren't they? I said about all the points they've scored over the last couple of weeks, but don't be fooled by it. They are desperate in defence. again just rock solid no frills meters that Craig Bellamy must appreciate so much Good work by the Dragons denying that offload Fusi made sure of the play the ball and Brandon Smith going to hectic cheese mode since he's come on 
Hughes hangs it up. A little too deep. Embi will get another seven tackle set for his team. Gee, you don't usually see that. They've kicked one dead in goal at that time. They're good. Trying to play that up tempo pace now, the Dragons. Done well. It's only 6 0. Just got to get that try, haven't they? Give themselves a bit of confidence. Be able to get across the line against Melbourne. Both the wingers on back to back plays, and Jack Bird just moves away from Ollum's side. Woods right up the middle. Embi seeing plenty of it. Chopped down by Kafusi. Hunt went back to Kafusi, who was being called out of it. Got to get the ball to Lomax. Most dangerous player the Saints have got. Be a big shift to get to him. Amon. Bird helps it on to Lomax, who's uh, grabbing it a lot with one hand, with one hand heavily strapped. Had his injury concerns this year. Bird down a short side. Looking for Ravalawa, he couldn't find him. And the Storm elect to keep it in because the counter-attack is on. And Meany turns on the Jets, weaves his way through traffic, past the fullback, like he wasn't there. And then it's trademark Melbourne Storm from defence into attack. And Nick Meany, you cannot wipe the smile off his face. Well, what a try there. Against the run of play, they were looking dangerous too, the Saints. Bird tried to go down the short side. Flop the ball back in field and Meany straight on there. As you said, they turn the fence into attack better than any other side in the cop. Scoops the ball up, Munster. No, straight away. Watch this for a little bit of footwork. He just left Moses and by just standing there. What about the speed? Took off, scores under the post. And that's what they can do to you. They just keep ticking over the scoreboard. A nothing play there from Birdie. Loses the ball. Munster straight away, draw and pass. And Meany, what about the footwork here? Great angle to watch it. Just leaves him standing. Wonderful idea of how to pick talent too, haven't they? Obviously, Craig Bellamy's seen something in Meany. Probably speed. It's in the open field and away he goes. Six tries in eight games for his new club. Nick Meaney and of course that ball's heading towards the touchline so Munster's got to equate look if I pick this up am I going to get dumped into touch and give the ball back to the dragon so he has a little look around knows that he can afford to keep it in because he's not going to get tackled and then he'll look for the speeds there and he found him just the the thought process as Pappenhausen adds the extras hasn't he made a miracle recovery we hope for the long term as well as we check in with Jake Jew. Yeah, just got a bit of information on that one, Ryan Pappenhausen, Speedy. He is okay, the Storm say. They say there's nothing structural about that right knee. Just had it jammed a little bit as he was pushed over that touchline. He is hobbling still a little bit, as you can see, and he struggled in that set uh, a little bit, but they say he is all good to continue just to run it out. Frank Bellamy with Ultimate faith in his medical staff for that assessment on Ryan Pappenhausen. You could see Zach Lomax too when they went through, just tried to arm grab. Obviously got something wrong with his hand. It's heavily strapped. Just couldn't make the tackle. Couldn't make the grip. A bit of a worry, is it, the way he's going at everything with one hand? Yeah, even when they've got the ball too, he's just snatched at the ball a few times. And that was a perfect example defensively. Just couldn't grab. Meany just went straight through. Look at Smith go. He's <laughs> going to stand out even more with the new hairdo. But, uh, the club tell me was punishment for a minor misdemeanor from his teammates. They said, you better go with the blonde hair. I don't, and... I don't think anything he'd do would be minor, would it? <laughs> He's tidied things up, hasn't he? Here's uh, Hughes trying to surge through a hole in between a couple of big men and Woods and Fuimano just dragged him back in time. Munster kicks the way he was facing for Coates to rise. Somehow knocked it back. Kafusi went underground and it almost spilt out from Grant to King. But the referee perfectly positioned to say knock on off Grant. Yeah, Grant was trying to get the ball away. Look at Coach High with the high ball. 
Hits the ball away here. Kafusi, Grant. The ball just slides out. That's a knock on. Saints hang on again. What about Kafusi's pass under the hand of the opponent to make sure it got to Grant? We're going to be talking to him at half time about jumping the gun too, and they've got Saints on the rack in their own half. It's a third penalty they've given away like that. Oh, just relentless, but Melbourne, aren't they? Ben Hunt hasn't wasted any time getting those touch finders after the penalties to piggyback the Dragons down the ground, and they've got to turn it into points now. Hunt with those nine try assists so far this season. Trying to find a, a gap in this storm defence as they continue to hammer that side. Wishart gets down low. Textbook against Zuli. Self-preservation there. This bloke's been... He's been good for the Saints too. Maguire. Set up for a play on this right-hand side. Hunt waits one in behind. And the bounce for Ravalawa, who was already grounded behind the dead ball line. And now Munster immediately. Dragons have their backs turned. Oh, high tackle by Woods. Not that it makes too big a difference. I've just got a penalty at this stage. The seven tackle set starting. It's not a quick one. It happened so quick. Big front rowers get wrong-footed like that. Throw out an arm. It's exactly what happened. But, gee, how quick do they want to turn defence into attack? They love getting on with the play. Here it is, Woodsy. A little bit wrong-footed there. High shot from Wishard. Playing with fire to have your back turned on Munster when there's a 20-metre tap about to occur. Final three minutes of the first half. Storm after that dominant performance against the Warriors and then the Knights looking to leapfrog the Panthers after they were knocked off by the Eels. Chance to go to the top of the NRL ladder if they win by six or more here this afternoon. Hughes taken down on play three. Grant, so often out of dummy half, taking the line on. He made 23 tackles last week. That was the most of any Storm player. That's how much possession they had in the Hunter. Final play. Munster missed Hughes. Happenhausen was careful. Now trying to improvise and end by. Got into the right slot again. You've got to be alert at the back, haven't you, when you play against the Melbourne team? All sorts of kicks, all sorts of players with options. And right on the spot that time by. Seems like an age since they've been up the other end. Just a whole half just bringing the ball off their own line, the Saints. The only way they've got into the half of Melbourne is on the back of penalties. Here's another one. So top of a live ladder, as you just saw. The Melbourne Storm looking to go 8-1. and one. For The first time in five years. The Dragons looking to turn this one around after being so resilient in recent weeks. 4-4 four and four record for them coming into this one. Hunt turned Bird back inside as a decoy. Here's Lomax. Through the tackle of Smith and had that ball carrying arm off the ground and thinking about an offload. Oh, Woods, short ball for Fui Maono. May have wound up being a Falcon for Fui Maono. Here they go again, Melbourne. Just let me get straight away on, the, on with the play. I reckon he'll be told to put that little offload in the, in the pocket, bit pre-line before the line, just run and try and Get down as quick as you can to Woods. Don't forget halftime show. Lara Pitt, Nick Ennis, Cooper Cronk about to review this first half and look ahead to the Sharks v Warriors. Kafusi, final set for the Storm before halftime. Hughes for Munster. A little bit of razzle dazzle. And now Olam on the outside. Alex to kick, and they'll need to pack. 
Play the ball, anyone? We'll play the ball here, and the clock hasn't frozen yet. It's not going to be time for the Storm to get on with it. At the break, it is the Melbourne Storm 12, St George Illawarra nil at Amy Park. He hasn't had his hands on the football that much, has he? Well, he scored the try there in the first half, but the danger here for the St George Illawarra side is to the scoreboard to start ticking over. Let's see how they start. Moses Suley. about the defence of Olam. And close to the line too. We've seen him over the last few weeks. If he gets 10 metres out and they give him that crash ball, he is hard to stop. What about the names written on his strapping? Ken and Nass doing it for the milestone men today. Just a little Where's reminder that? in case they need it for the storm. One player playing game number 150, another in game 200. That kickoff had a lot of hang time and Embi would have been a little anxious. Camped underneath it. Trent Liero has come on as the fresh man at the start of this second half. And number 15 for him. Largely as an interchange forward for Melbourne. Dragons with an uphill task. So difficult to turn around half time deficits at this venue. But here is Suli dancing away from Wishart. And came again to help drag him down on halfway. That was a little bit better there from Josh Maguire, just trying to promote the ball. You can't die wondering, you can't run one out against this Melbourne team. Put a few passes together if they are to score some points. Mappenhausen. You know what, I'll be kicking early to Pappenhausen. He's not 100% out there. You get in a good position in your 40-metre line, just kick. Put some pressure on him. He doesn't want to put any pressure on that right leg at the moment. Another stumble after that play the ball. He's playing through the pain barrier. Interesting to see whether he hands over the goal-kicking responsibilities. It wasn't the usual spring in the step when he brought that one back and then... And he got up to play it and was knocked off balance. There were some issues. Oh, forced the offload to Munster. And he was being held back. I think that was the appeal. After Grant forced it out the back so he can get to dummy half here for the final play. Down the short side. Little kick in behind Ravalawa. And Embi was cool. As it could have bounced anywhere. It was a good play there. He's played pretty well. He slipped over a couple of times in the first half, Embi. Got himself in a position there straight away. This is some tough yardage now for the Dragons. I don't see that revved up really early in the in the second half. Here's Suley. Richard holding on. He's doing a great job, isn't he, against a much bigger opponent. Taking him down one-on-one -on, -one on multiple occasions so far as we check in with Jakey. Yeah, the message from halftime, boys. Anthony Griffin really happy with his side as we see Josh Maguire going down that left edge there. But... He said they're in the contest, just stay in the grind and try and wear out the storm and come home in this one. Craig Bellamy said too many penalties from his sides and he wants better fifth tackle options. And just an update on Ryan Pappenhausen, the storm say, stay, say there is no change to his condition. He was assessed at half time. It's just been jammed up. He's going to have to push through the pain. How is that for adventure inside your own red zone? A couple of 20 metre passes. Olin brought down just inside his own 20 at the end of it all. Pretty confident. They're playing with plenty of confidence, aren't they? The Melbourne Storm, Munster with the, the long spiral pass out to Olam. Now they go through the middle here. The arrow gained some momentum with that play the ball for Grant. And now Munster, big hole. Goes back to Grant. Can he hold on? He can. Harry Grant sees the try line. And now he nearly found Kenny Bromwich. Surely that went forward. And that is the adjudication to cut short those celebrations for Olam. Gee, what about the way he stays alive there? Grant will start this second half. The ball goes forward out of his hands. Just a quick play the ball early in the second half here. A couple of Saints left laying on the ground. Munster involved. 
And Grant just watches. Tries to throw the miracle ball to Bromwich to get him over that stripe. Craig Bellamy won't be happy with that. He's a perfectionist. He'll be saying, mate, don't throw those sort of balls, those miracle balls. Yeah, they'll still plays up their sleeve. And they had the Dragons defence shot to bits potentially if he accepted the tackle. Munster's pass back to Grant was pretty flat too, so the Dragons dodged that bullet. Sully picking on Hughes this time, who had plenty of support from King and Kafusi. And Maguire out on that left edge. It's play after play down that side. More often than not, looking to wear them down defensively. And this will help. I'm not going to call names all day, guys. They, just, they keep testing the referee, don't they, the Melbourne Storm? Inside the 10. As they figure, we'll keep doing it. We'll have to stop blowing the whistle soon. Great field position for the Dragons, but they cough it up again early in the count. Another short ball, this time Hunt to Woods, and he couldn't hold on. You know the other thing, too, you, you've got to enjoy the collision in this game. I know the pass wasn't that good from Hunt, but oh, geez, you've got to get yourself ready to, to get belted in that sort of situation. I think you should have hung on to the ball there. What do you think about first? Holding on to the ball or the contact? Catching the ball first, that's the first thing that comes to you, I'd say. <laughs> But you've got to, you've got to want to, you got to want to have the collision. If you, if you don't want to have the collision, you might as well go and play lawn bowls. Grant in the mood today. It's his 39th game in the NRL. What an impact he's made already. Seven try assists this season. Most metres from dummy half. Of, Anyone in the comp? Smith slipping through tackles and taking on Aaron Woods. I think that hairdo might hang around for a little while. Piero yeah, just slow past the Kafusi, trying to go over the top of Hunt. Hughes eyeing off a couple of big men trying to put the dancing feet on. Uh, the seven is out of play. Munster wants it from Grant. Shifts it on to Pappenhausen. Pass hits the deck again. Meany, little one-hander back to Pappenhausen. And Munster improvising. Lomax again with one hand. Good enough to tidy up. And it's hard in mouth stuff every time he goes at it with one hand, I'd imagine, for Dragons fans. He's starting to get himself involved in the game too, Munster. A good bounce that time. He cleaned up well, Zach Lomax. Just always a little trick shot here. He's lucky enough to get the ball back. So it looks to me like their line speed's gone from the Dragons. Harry Grant, he's having a, a field day at the moment when they've got the ball. Here they come. Amon for Sully. Back on the angle, trying to surge through that hole. That time, Hughes, legs tackle, outstanding. Hunt. Throwing a dummy this time to Maguire. Nearly open up for the seven. Amon off the back of it. Sully dropped it on the boot. And trapping and scrapping is Jerome Hughes. Kafusi's in a bit of bother. Sucking in the big ones in back play. He's OK for Lease. Holland. Lovely offload to Munster. Hop, skip, and a jump, and he says to Meany, do your best with that little trick pass. And now, Pappenhausen somehow fighting the energy. Stop. How's this try on one leg from Papp? Just watch the way he checks himself, too. So he makes sure he's on side. Interesting to see it again. It's like he's done the other leg here. Might have done the hamstring, Hammy. because your whole body's thrown out of whack by the knee on the other side. Affecting his play. running style, isn't it? Yeah, again, it's Munster. Just so strong in their own half. They score more long-range tries than any team in the competition. Keep the ball alive. 
Watch this for a ball. A little flick out the back. I mean, he's on his way. Checks himself. He's onside. Poor old Hunt was there to make the tackle, Ben. The captain of the Dragons always trying to clean up. Just couldn't foot it with these guys. Look at that for a ball. That's skill. I mean, he can't be, believe his luck. He's playing on the outside of those guys and get him the footy. Pappenhausen. <laughs> How good is he? Pappenhausen has come from the field, boys. He's just limping off around the sideline here, not looking too good. We saw that knee injury in the first half, and he was just grabbing the left leg behind what looked to be the hamstring. So Chris Lewis is the man that goes on for the Melbourne Storm, but we'll try to keep you updated as soon as we know more about Ryan Pappenhausen. Scores 12 straight, or 12 points for the third game in a row. And no one's ever done that before. Phenomenal point scorer, but he has been replaced as the goal kicker as well. Nick Meany lining up to convert after his try assist for this man. He won't be back today. Might not be back for a little while. He's got the right knee and the left hamstring to worry about. What a shame. As Meany punches over the conversion. And it's... 18-0 in favour of the Storm with half an hour to go. Yeah, Ryan Pappenhausen, he has been unbelievable to start this season and this game as well. Get crosses for an early try for the Storm. Back to his best form this season. Leading the Dally M count so far. There's that first try he scored. He's been in the action defending well. This is the injury where he picked up with the Dragons, pushed him over the sideline, just picked up a knee injury there. He powered through most of the first half. He powers through this play here to score this try, but it could have caused an issue on the other leg there. You see him grab that left hamstring, it appears. Unfortunate, he has been their best player all season, their best player in this game, and we'll let you know when we know more. That's the risk. And you leave a player out there. And they do have a concern like that can lead to other issues and hopefully Pappenhausen not sidelined for too long. And as Jake Duke said, Chris Lewis comes on. And the number 18 jumper. You don't you see you don't see it very often, do you? Losing two backs in a game. First uh, with William Smith with that peck injury. And Pappenhausen has left the field. You probably don't fill your bench up with the outside backs, do you? So it's going to be a big reshuffle, this one. Hughes collared by Maguire. Munster played his part in the last couple of tries, and Meany was a chance there. Olin back in board, and Kenny Bromwich about to plant it down. So you've had Nasa for Solomona denied a try in his milestone game, and now Kenny Bromwich won't get one in game 200. Well, I'm saying that Meany had the first grab on the ball here, knocked it on. That's it, Josh. Hey, hurry, hurry! <laughs> Tried to hang on to the ball there. That was optimistic. So, Melbourne, with all those injury concerns, Remus Smith has been off since early on in this one, now Pappenhausen. So, the Dragons, if they can score next, might be able to surge late in this contest. See Sullivan's come on. Backing up there and into the dummy half roll. Giving McCulloch a chop out. Just might need that little bit of spark out of dummy half. No good going out there and not running. And he gets a chance. It's pretty quick out of there. Damone slots in with... Sullivan taken down to find Hunt to spiral one down. And Xavier Coates so safe under any kind of high ball. Sullivan was a try scorer last week off the bench. Oof. Good contact there. Frankie Molo makes them stick. Let's Lewis know he's involved in the ball game. Backslam following up on King who doesn't really flinch no matter what kind of treatment he cops. Yeah. 
Ramon trying to strip it away from Olam. Had a good go at it, but it's tough to get it away from him. Wishart down the short side. And Lomax able to take him down, and he has a crack at the speed. Munster. So cool the way he goes about it. Floats that one down. And Fine in off the wing to take it. He'll sleep well tonight, won't he? Surely. Love his involvement in the game. Jake Duke, you got some more news? Yeah, confirmed from the Melbourne Storm, boys. A low-grade hamstring strain on that left leg for Ryan Pappenhausen. Obviously, the knee was an issue on the right leg as well. So he is obviously done for the game. And at the moment, young Tyron Wishart is at fullback for the Storm. Big space here. Wood saw it, moved it on. Bird to Lomax, who says the Ravaloa back inside, please. And a little too late, perhaps. And Lomax forced to concede. He'll play it on the last. Almost a candidate for a set restart. Very late in the count. Here comes Hutz against his opposite halfback, and that's some take by Hughes. You just come away the big plays all the time, don't they? The crossfield kick. They've had a big reshuffle of their back line. The Melbourne Storm. What about that for a take? They're just so good at so many facets of the game in different positions. I only noticed when they made the break there to the Saints that it was Harry Grant who got himself across there in cover to make the tackle there on Lomax. And now he puts King through a hole, late offload to Coates. Another one over the top. Kenny, look for his support. And Meany was a long way behind. He's a little hobbled at the moment. He apologises to Bromwich for not being there. And Hughes tries to find grasp, but does not. The Dragons are a chance. There was a big hole opening up on that previous set, and they couldn't capitalise. The Storm was able to scramble. Uh, they've got to be optimistic here that they can turn it around potentially. Well, they've done well, well. it's going against them. Can you believe it? An obstruction penalty. 20 metres out from their the own line here that the referee has cracked down on. McKaylee doesn't get back behind the play the ball. He can't get involved here in the play. Oh, there you go. That's the explanation. Ravalawa came from an offside position to then get involved in the play. So you can have a look at it. Played inside the 20. Ravalawa was 25 metres out and then accepts that pass. And the referee was right on top of it. There were only a few eligible receivers, if you like, block on that play. Yeah, I wonder what they'll do here. They'll just try and eat up the clock. 18 nil. It's more than Storm been run around for the last three or four minutes, but they get the opportunity to slow it down now, get their breath back. And then he'll have a shot at conversion. That goal here, 20 nil. Hit that first one nicely. Six from 11 now this season overall. Just shy of the 70% mark with the boot. They're looking a little bit tired, the Melbourne Storm. Some of the outside backs of the Dragons have got to come in and use their speed and their footwork to try and create something for the Dragons. Three converted tries, the difference at the moment. Meany looking to take the advantage beyond that. And knocks another one over. It's the Storm 20 nil up now. Don't forget, the Sharks against the Warriors coming up next on your Sunday ticket. I reckon they'll put on a show too, the Sharks. Would have been a little bit disappointed with their performance last week. A little bit of a hiccup for them. Warriors last start winners after bouncing back from that shellacking at this venue. Stay on side. <laughs> Sunday night with Matty Johns after that. Josh Adokar, former Melbourne Storm Premiership player, will drop in and entertain the boys, no doubt. 
Mind your House of Hearts segment the other night. Block, well played. Good fun. Thought Cliff Lyons stole the show. Cliff, he was brilliant. <laughs> Don't like what he said to his teammate, but poor old Beaver. <laughs> After dishing up all those tries for Beaver, I'm sure he'll accept it. <laughs> Grants out of dummy half. Oh. Thought about it. Yeah, he had King looming large. Smith just puts the head down, burrowing his way to that 40 metre line. Hughes to hang one up. Coates, a willing chaser. He gets there as well, Xavier, and knocked it back, did he? Still alive, says the ref. Wish up. Kept his arms above ground level. Monster. What about that? For Jerome Hughes. Cam Monster has more time than anyone else. And doesn't he make the most of it? Well, how calm is he under pressure? I reckon you'll find that the halfback had used, put his hand up and said, mate, I'm here alone. Kick across field, the timing of it. And just his patience when he got the ball. Again, the Saints allow the ball to bounce. They get the football back. The one tackle, they go straight down the short side again. And here, look at this for timing. Hughes calling for it and gets there easily. They're great to watch, aren't they? The Storm when they're in a mood. They score some amazing team tries. The effort here from Wishart to get that offload away, and then Munster thought, do I throw the 30-metre pass or do I just drop it on a dime for my house partner? You don't see separation between six and seven like that too often and combining. That's pretty special. Yeah, just a little bit of a sneak go there for Hughes. As I said, we got that wide shot. You would have been able to see him calling for it. It's on. I'm out here alone. Hello. That's an amazing stat. Scored in five straight games against the Dragons. And that includes his one and only game as a Cowboy. He joined the Storm in 2017. One game for the Titans as well. And what a pickup he has been. Nailing down that number seen roll as Pappenhausen watches on, all iced up on that left hamstring. If you've just tuned in, right knee was an issue heading into half time. And then after scoring another wonderful team try, he uh, pinged his hamstring late in the run to get to the try line for that one. Tough spot here for Meany. Strikes it absolutely perfectly. Black dot stuff from Meany from the touchline. And it's 26-0 now, Jake Duke. Yeah, the Melbourne Storm, they can score points almost at will at the moment. That's 146 in their last three games. But what's even more impressive is the fact that they've gone almost 200 minutes of football now without conceding a try. You have to go all the way back to the 29th minute of the Warriors game on Anzac Day to see the last time the Storm conceded a try because they had no tries conceded against Newcastle last week. And that's what Craig Bellamy said to me for pre-game. He said, we want to see a good defensive performance. The attack's going really well, but we want to turn it on in defence as well. And they're doing that and scoring points as well today. And if they get to 32 points, that will be an all-time record for the most points scored through the first nine rounds. And Wishart is hunting it here. Oh, nice tackle by Amby, who got danced around by Meany for that first half try, but whacked Wishart there. Gee, you look like his old man there in open space. Powerfully built around the legs. It was a great run. Smith. After the pass went out the back, he still turned it into a positive play. He always looks like his old man, doesn't he? <laughs> Everything about him. Tyron Wishart. And Kafusi. Taken down on the 20-metre line. They're midway through this tackle count. And they're knocking on the door of more points. King flings one out the back. How's that? Big Jesse got down low. And it's opened up here for Kenny. Back to Grants, who didn't sense... Sims coming from the blind side, but held on. Mudster, he's done it all today and caps it off with a try, does he? Cam Mudster, some kind of performance. 
They've got 30 on the board and the record in their sights for the most points through nine rounds. The 1935 Roosters own that mark. Yeah, some sort of player, this bloke, Cam Munster. And the top two players in the competition, I reckon. The offload there from King has played great this afternoon. That one went to ground. The Saints stopped coming up with their defence. And straight away from the play the ball, once the sees they haven't come off their line, they're short. Just sitting behind the play the ball and backs himself. And they're in again, the storm. Look how quickly he got the ball down too. Plenty of Saints players around, but this is just strength. Gets over the line and slams the ball down straight away. Look, there's arms around it everywhere. Look at that for power. Munster in. They've done well to really go on with this too. Look, have a look at that for a game. Munster, 30 nil. 12 nil at half time. They've got that way about them, the Melbourne Storm. Just keep going. Keep playing as strong as ever. And firm, soon be 32 nil. What a team. So an 87-year-old record bites the dust. The Melbourne Storm, 325 points and counting through the first nine rounds. What about Magic Round? Coming up next week, shaping to be the biggest and best one yet. Tickets to Friday and Sunday, selling fast. You want to act now, you want to get it. And guess what kind of fixture is coming up to headline the weekend? It is the Melbourne Storm taking on Penrith at Suncorp in Magic Round. But Craig Bellamy's not thinking about that until about 20 minutes time. Yep, prime time. Can't wait for that. NRL.com slash tickets to secure those and they'll be sellouts so you want to get them fast. Refreshed, ready to go is Jesse Bromwich. Might be down on a few troops by the look of it. Rumor Smith, Pappenhausen. They'll be racing the clock to get themselves there on Magic Round. And then you look up, you're winning 32 0, and Saints have got their head in their hands, and all of a sudden, big Nelson comes back on the field. <laughs> in company with Bromwich, with the Jesse variety, you sense they want to get those milestone men involved on the try scoring front. Oh, look at that pickup by Grants, and he's away. Harry Grants accelerating in a real hurry. Ravalawa under pressure. What a take. Olam trying to soccer it away, but Ravalawa held on. Yeah, they, they play at a pace different than any other side in the competition, Melbourne. Once they get a little bit of sniff, it's 32-0 and they're still playing hard. And lucky to get back there and clean up. Look at their defence coming up off the line now. Fianna did well. Oates was ready to pounce on any little fumble. But the shift amounted to nothing. <laughs> Four tackles now, and they're 15 metres out from their own line. They are relentless, the Melbourne Storm. And my sees if Jack Bird can do anything, but he's tackled 20 metres out. Ben Hunt forced to kick from inside the 20 again, is he? No, he'll take the game on here, on the last. Fine does fumble, and the Storm have great field position again. It wasn't a great position to give him the ball there. Fiona comes away with the error. Straight away in the attack. They love counter-attack now. The Melbourne team, one settler there. And they'll shift the ball to the left right now. Grant heads that way. Munster always scheming. Always two or three options for him. Gave it to Jesse Bromwich to set it up. Munster waits on that left-hand side still. Big Nelson for Hughes. And nice tackle from Suli. Told not to offload it on that occasion was Lewis, who replaced Pappenhausen. Did he force an offload? Yes, he did. Tidied up by Embai. And they'll come back. Moses knocks the ball down. Off on Dragons. Yeah, little hand in there from the Dragons as... Nasifa Solomona, look for the miracle offload. Yep. 
Look at Harry Grant, 141 metres for a dummy half, unheard of. He loves getting his hands on the footy. He's trying to force the issue there. He's running the ball. What about some of the pickups too? What, to back into the game, he's scooping the ball up and away he goes. <laughs> that pick up on halfway and then turn it into a 30 metre run potential to set up a try. Absolutely phenomenal. The performance of the spine today for the Storm. They lost one member. And now tried to get Meany on the outside. Ravalawa saved the try with that effort. And they're all up early as well off the back of that scrum as defensive teams tend to do. You just get the furlough, it's only a matter of time. Just relentless, aren't they? They just keep pouring through. The Melbourne team. You're on the line there, Cameron. And they're hungry for more points here. The organisation from Hughes. Getting his team ready for the pet play here after Kenny Bromwich sets them up. Short side for Big Nelson. Surely this time he won't be denied. And that one's for Dad. He lost his father in recent months. It was so emotional the way he spoke about it yesterday and the team rally around the big man in game number 150 he does have try number 24 and that one is for Vasa. He's been trying to get over hasn't he the line had a great first half set play here I love these ruck plays just have a look where bigger sofa comes from just drift out they go up the short side they drift out and that is a set play for a big man that close to the line. Beautiful ball playing from Grant. The sofa is over finally. Look at the amount of play as he bounces out of the way. Looks up to the heavens. To his dad. That was very emotional before the game, wasn't it? A little bit of sand in my eyes watching that. Yes. What a player. Geez, I'm glad he's stuck with league. There was talk of him going back to New Zealand with the All Blacks. So happy he's still in our game. Well, that was his dad's dream, and he's got dad written on that tape on his wrist. Mum's here to watch him today on Mother's Day. Very special weekend for the family. Mum nearly had to get on a stepladder to give him a kiss <laughs> and a hug. Such a great club, the Melbourne Storm. The characters and the personalities and the way they combine under Bellamy. The Dragons came here on a three-game winning streak and yet to register a point. With 11 minutes to go, Nick Meany that time gave it a little too much outside the right-hand upright. And it remains 36-0. Yeah, try for Nelson Asafa Solomona in game 150. What a game he's had. He almost had one here in the first half. It was disallowed, but he just picked himself up, kept going. He said he's playing for his dad today on a real emotional day. His mum here, as you mentioned, Speedy, has been absolutely monumental for the storm, and he gets a try to finally celebrate that milestone. And as you mentioned, when he had one disallowed, it was his first try that he scored against the Dragons all the way back in 2015 150 games later he gets one today points to the skies for dad and we have a new competition leader after this result boys with the storm well ahead they will jump the panthers into first place ahead of that massive clash in magic round next week top of the ladder blockbuster coming your way on fox league in magic round the melbourne storm against the penrith panthers they both will have an eight and one record and guess who's handed them the losses? Parramatta sitting there in fourth block. Oh, are they your team, I sense? Gunny is. Parramatta. <laughs> Very good win for them the other night. Right in Penrith. And knocked off the storm at this joint. Not many can boast that. It's all about the storm today, though. There's Munster. Munster and Grant right in the conversation for the 3, 2 and 1 in the Dally M today. Jerome Hughes, a candidate as well. Forwards have laid the platform. 
So many good players, and this guy off the bench has been phenomenal, but he might have jumped the gun. Brandon Smith. <laughs> oh, he's on side, he says. <laughs> Teammates have let him down, perhaps. Dragons find a consolation try or two here. Sims is going to love coming to Melbourne next season. There was hope from the Storm that they could get him a bit earlier than that and have him playing in Melbourne Storm colours by now. But the Dragons said that he wasn't available to leave just yet. Craig Bellamy wants him in 2023 and will have him. Not a bad pickup. They'll get stronger with Sims playing. Probably just wish he was on the other side this afternoon. So inside the 20 they go. DeBellin for Hunt. They've kept on peppering this side, and Meany couldn't contain Lomax. Little no look at the Ravalawa. Who did so well to stay in. And how many numbers were there for the Storm when they looked to be a little shot to bits just seconds earlier? Right through nearly for Sullivan. Hunting tries in back-to-back -back weeks. Amone flying out of the line. Big Nelson. Lovely offload. And DeBellin does come up with their consolation try with eight minutes to go. Yeah, well done there from DeBellin. Just a support back on the inside. Some good footwork, as you said, Big Nelson come from nowhere to try and put on a shot. Oh, that's a white sort of tackle here. So they stay alive, the pass back on the inside. DeBellin gets over for the first try for the Dragons. I don't think they've been disgraced this afternoon. It's just Melbourne is so good, just rolling that scoreboard over. And finally they get a try with seven and a half minutes to go. Now into double figures for his career in game number 174. It is try number 10 for Jack. That's what the Newcastle coach said last week, that we were pretty good today, I thought. 50 points to two. Oh, 50. Mm. Yeah, pretty good compared to what? What they dished up in previous weeks against Parramatta, for instance. Ripples of applause around Amy Park. As Lomax bangs over the conversion and brings the margin back to 30 for Anthony Griffin. And his Dragons, Kenny Bromwich, unfortunately, looks like he's under some distress. And this is all coming up next. Nico Hines, former Melbourne Storm man. Now a Cronulla Shark. Ready to take on the Warriors and Sean Johnson looking for a little bit of magic against his former club. Love the afternoon footy. So good. Both these games. We'll be played second half, I'd say, in darkness, but Kenny Bromwich, 200 games. You never underestimate that. Like he's surrounded with so many stars during his career at Melbourne, but contribution has been large. Looks like he's okay. Just thought for a moment he might have picked up a little injury concern of his own. Should be right to go for the blockbuster against Penrith. DeBellin with his tail up. Sims playing as a middle forward today despite the number on his back. That late reshuffle and Hunt hunting a 40-20 here. And does he get it? What does the touchy say about this one? It's a close run thing. It's oh. 50 centimetres away. And Tyron Wishart let the touchy know. And they'll have a ball. look at that. Challenge is the cry. Challenge. Hunt thinks he's nailed it. I would too. Hey, Tomo, Paddy. Captain's challenge. Uh, dra Dragons are challenging where the ball has gone out. Saying it's gone past the 20 for a 40-20 kick. It's tough to find an angle here to rule conclusively as well. 
But we'll have a look for you. No doubt about where he kicked it from. Well and truly inside that 40. Inside the 40. Just looking to see where it goes out. He thought he had his third, but I think the touch is right. Probably could have gone the another goes 30 centimetres or so. The reaching the 20 metre line. The challenge is yeah, unsuccessful. Worth challenging, but... Yeah, you've got it left. You can't uh, take him with you. Storm still have theirs up their sleeve with less than six minutes to go. We're behind the line here, guys. Jack, Jack. Hey, guys, we're all behind the line. Keep coming. Up now, Jack. Oh, Harry Grant again for Munster as they look to add to that point scoring record. Through nine rounds, those 90, 1935 roosters have been blown out of the water by the 2022 storm. I'm glad we don't have to pick a man of the match. Someone has that responsibility for the Dally M's. Ducks under a tackle or two, and M by Reddit couldn't take it with him. Hughes with a fresh set elects to kick, and Munster was taken out, surely. A moan just bowled him over. And uh, there's a penalty right in front. Well, again, it was Brendan Smith just breaking up that defensive line of the Saints inside shoulders. Hunt just an arm grab there. There's the ball from Bight. Tried to do the double kick. And this time it's used for Munster. If you remember that try just a little bit earlier. Hungry for more points. Kafusi setting them up. And by asking for reinforcements on the other short side. They go open side though for Munster. Little double pump for Olam. Can't get rid of Lomax. Wishart, that first receiver. Big hole opening up. In by there to save the day again for the Dragons. He's done that a couple of times this afternoon. In by. Got plenty of traffic coming at him. Short ball. And they do crash over. And might just have the final say today. The Melbourne Storm bring up 40. And it's Chris Lewis, the man who replaced Ryan Pappenhausen. Who's gone over for his fourth career try. Yeah, just the crash ball there. Perfectly timed again from Harry Grant. They go up the short side. Here's Wishard's run by tackle. Just have a look how he it looks like he's going one way. He's going to go to the open and then comes back the short side. Crash play. Lewis is in. Yeah, my mistake. Trent Liero it is. Going over for his fourth career try. The number 16. Could have taken the penalty goal from right in front, but they wanted more tries to add to their point scoring haul. And this man was the beneficiary, the 21 year old who just does his business off the bench, playing his role to perfection and gets the payoff late in this one. Yeah, given the, the skill of Grant, well, he's going to go one way and jumps back the short side. The arrow. He's the benefactor of that nice soft pass on the goal line. And then again, the storm. Nick Meany gaining some confidence for a key role next week, perhaps, when they take on the Panthers. Could come down to goal kicking. And he made the necessary adjustment there. Sneaking it inside that right hand upright this time. Too far away from kickoff in game two. And the Warriors contend with the Sharks at Shark Park on a Sunday afternoon. All coming away on Fox League.
Wade Graham out there on the left edge. Let's have a look at the running meters here for, for all the uh, Melbourne Storm team. Bromwich 133, Grant 151, Big Nelson 136, Kafusi 109. Gee, they share it around well. King 121. All adds up to 1500 plus compared to 860. Lewis. That's what's coming up next. The Penrith Panthers in Magic Round, then the Cowboys who are flying high this season. It's up in Townsville as well. So a tough run for them before the bye with Manly v Melbourne just before they get a little rest, the storm. Good time to get the rest too, just halfway, a little bit over halfway of the, of the Premiership. They can freshen up. Right around origin time. Well knocked on by Embi after the improvisation on the kick from Brandon Smith. I reckon he changed which foot he kicked it with right at the death. But just have a look how hard they chase too. It wasn't the greatest of kicks. But they're right there on Embi. Good shot of it too, how hard they go after the ball, Melbourne. Good spot to get the to loosen the feed here. Right in the middle of the park. One more set for the Dragons to face up to defensively. Munster. Wishart. And behind a teammate or two, but no one obstructed. No Kenny Bromwich to try and send over. As he watches from the sidelines in game 200. Hughes. Oh, he's all around Frankie Mole. Through, almost an argument to send him to the bin with 29 seconds to go. He was given a warning in the first half, big Frankie. Just got to roll out of the play the ball there. What are they going to do here? Just wait. Quick tap. Good work. That's what the fans want to see. Play on. Wishart drops it in behind. Contact on the chaser. And that'll do us. And the Melbourne Storm fans standing to applaud at Amy Park. Another fantastic performance to go top of the ladder. Setting it up for the massive clash against the Penrith Panthers in Magic Round. Full time here. It is the Melbourne Storm 42, St George Illawarra just six.